Um, th this was the gig I was actually asked to do, and when my colleague at work found out that I was coming here, they said, you may as well do the other one while you're here. <coughs> <laughs> so um, it was nice to, to meet Marianne, my former work colleague. So support for carers. So this is what I'm going to basically touch on in the brief time we've got. I'll talk a little bit about dementia and what it is. And then why is it that family members who are caring for someone with dementia find it so difficult? What support services are available? And some tips for, for now. So a bit about dementia. And, I, and people were asking me this in the break. Um, dementia is an overall umbrella term describing changes in thinking, uh, memory and behaviour. And it's caused by a disease. And there are about 100 different diseases that can cause dementia. The most common we know of is Alzheimer's disease. There's also vascular dementia, Lewy body disease, Parkinson's, uh, frontotemporal dementia. And it's not a normal part of ageing, as I said before. The thing about dementia, because it's in the brain and it's because it's connected to who we are, um, it's a very individual disease. Everyone's presentation is quite unique. Dementia progresses at different rates for different people. So some people it's very speedy, um, the changes are rapid, other people it's, it's years and there's not much change at all. And importantly, other medical conditions can actually make the symptoms worse. I'll talk a bit more about that later. Now, why is it so difficult, do you think, caring for someone with dementia? Some people here are already doing it because they've told me. So what, what makes it so difficult, do you think? Yes. Okay, the re rep repetition, that's number one on everyone's list. Yes, say, asking the same questions, saying the same things over and over again. When you've heard it the fifth time, it's all right. When you've heard it the hundredth time, it's, it's doing your head in. Yep. What else makes it difficult? Yep. When they don't remember who you are, when you have a prior relationship, they don't remember their children, grandchildren, yes. They're the sorts of things that can make it so difficult. So the symptoms, this is a cartoon that I often use with my sessions and carers identify with it. Um, <coughs> okay, so um, the changes caused by dementia change how a person thinks. So somebody who was previously very logical and rational suddenly seems to be having rather bizarre ways of interpreting their environment. Um, they have trouble remembering recent information, which is why they keep asking the same question. They can't, as I was talking about before, the hippocampus. The hippocampus is, uh, is shrinking. They're not able to actually re remember information. It changes how people communicate. They often can't find the words. They can't understand communication. They find things too complex. They're unable to understand something from another person's point of view. And this is very difficult when it's, it, you're dealing with personal relationships. People can't explain things and have it understood. Changes for, challenges for carers is, number one, it's unpredictable. You cannot predict from one minute to the next what's going to happen. And while a little bit of you know, variation in life makes it interesting, too much is too much. And people just can't manage that unpredictability. I think it's probably the, the hardest thing. Most people with dementia still live at home, and so um, the families have it 24-7. Um, they're, they're supporting the person at home. Uh, as part of my research, I, I read this study of um, people comparing people caring for someone with dementia as compared to caring for somebody with a chronic health condition, you know, where they actually need a lot of physical care. And carers of people with dementia are at 47% risk of having um, depression and anxiety as compared to carers of physical illness, 3%. Quite a marked difference, okay? And the difference is about this unpredictability and the fact that the person looks the same, they seem physically the same, and so people come in to visit say, well, he looks exactly the same, he seems all right. <laughs> um, but the person is not there. The interaction and the engagement is lost somewhere. They kind of switch off. And that's very challenging in, in terms of relationships. So what sort of services uh, are available to support people? Now, everyone knows the aged care system is a little bit of a minefield to manage. So 
getting information about this is really important. So in your packs, there's this, a sheet like this, okay? And it's called Caring for Someone with Dementia Services Summary. Now, we developed this as a try and trying to help people understand. And basically, it it's talks about the different stages of care and on the left-hand side, who they are, what they do, and when to contact. So, you know, it's a useful sort of resource. So here's a summary of it on the slide. So there's your GP, which we've talked about a bit today already. Diagnosis, in terms of uh, trying to find out does the person have dementia or not. And then there's assessment for services at home. So you need to go through a process of having an aged care assessment done in order for you to get these services. And then there are the supports at home. So the details of that are on this sheet if you, if you want to look into it. Um, these are, ha having relationships with these people are really, having good open communication with these people are really important. And these are the other conditions that can actually make dementia worse. So if somebody has dementia and they're constipated, it's going to make the dementia worse. Um, if they've got a lot of pain, it's going to make it worse. So having that treated is important. So what do we do at Alzheimer's Australia? Well, we have a national dementia helpline. It's available nine to five, Monday to Friday, and um, it's a gateway to support. So you can get counselling, you can get counselling over the telephone, you can have counselling face to face, either at your home, with your family, in, a, in an office, anywhere in Victoria. We'll go everywhere. We have memory lane cafes, which are social afternoon activity uh, sessions for people with dementia and their carers. We have a living with memory loss program for people in the early stages. We have lots of information. And the other thing in your pack is the, um, uh, the help sheets. So th this is the list of the help sheets. You get an idea there's quite a lot, okay? And you can access them online or you can get them from our office. Uh, we've got a library, we've got website, and we also have the family information and support sessions. So I'm just going to show you a little clip of a DVD about some carers talking about their experience of getting help. So hopefully this works. Information. So we're going to skip the video. Sorry, it's not going to work. So we'll just continue. Absolutely, you go. Slide, yes. So. so here's some tips for living with dementia. Okay. So there's no simple rule. Everyone deals with it in your own way, but it's important to not try and do it on your own. So having open discussions with other family, friends, neighbours, that sort of thing, is really important to just, you know, it's a community issue. It's not a, it's not a family issue. The community needs to be supporting all these people caring. Uh, get as much information as you can. And share the information with other people. You know, when you get, pick up, um, you know, these flyers and that, you might know somebody, give it to them if they're caring for someone with dementia. Accept help sooner rather than later, and it's very, you know, we live in a society where people kind of make do, and that's fantastic. But in fact, if you put off the help, it then becomes more complicated. Use our services. Don't try and do it by yourself. Seek support early. Once again, you're not on your own. And aim to make each day the best you can. Um, and, and try and sort of um, uh, have a bit of sense of humour about things too. Try and see the funny side of things. I think, I'm sure, Gail, you saw the funny side of things when you started telling your mother she was totally right. <laughs> yes. Um, try and be gentle on yourself. If you do lose it, and you will, if you're caring for someone with dementia, you'll get angry. It's just not normal. Don't beat yourself up about it. Just say, well, you know, I've done that. I wasn't coping. I was a bit stressed. Be gentle on yourself and try and be gentle on the person with dementia because they're doing their best to cope. The other thing is, a lot of people have said to me, look, you know, I, I went and picked my father up and, you know, he's got dementia and we brought him home, we gave him a, a nice lunch and we had all the family there and the next day he said to me, I haven't seen you for so long, why don't you come and see me? And they said, well, what was the point of bringing him home for lunch? He didn't remember it. Okay. And I say to them, was he enjoying it at the time? Oh, yes, he was having a great time. The grandchildren were there and they were showing him their, their toys and their iPads and he was really enjoying it. I said, well, that's the important thing. 
not been able to remember an activity does not diminish the enjoyment of it at the time. And that's really hard for people to, uh, to remember. Okay, now this is a little catchphrase that we have at Alzheimer's Australia, which is really helpful for here, people. I can't change the person with dementia. They can't change, but the one thing I can change is my response. So, thank you very much. Thank you.